Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about Jinja form templates to add new questions. So in this lecture I'm going to show you how to add the functionality that will allow users to add um, to add more questions to the database. So first we will take a look at the Jinja form template and then cover how view functions process the form data. So first of all I'm going to come down here and I'm going to provide some space. I'm going to create another view function that is going to handle uh, creating questions and I'm going to call that view function add question what should be the URL the URL I'm just going to add it in quotes I'm going to say add underscore question this is the URL that we have um, add I could say add a add a add add new question I could just say add new question there we go. So uh, whenever you want to create a new URL, make sure you prefix it with a with an empty slash. Now, what do we want this add question uh, view function to do? We just want it. So I'm just going to let me just create it first. So we have add question. I just want it to render, sorry, to return the render template function and what should it return so because this is a multi-page multi web application i want the add question to have a specific page for itself therefore i'm going to create a separate html file so in here within the templates i'm just going to say new file and i'm going to say add underscore question dot html there we go so we have created that i'm just going to create the boilerplate for it and um, the title is going to be add a new uh, sorry a new question and i'm just going to add an h1 that says add a new question we're going to talk about the content later so i just want to grab that and map it to this url map this view function to this uh, html page so what do we want to render we want to render the add underscore question dot html page this is uh, what we want to render from here so i'm just going to uh, save that and i'm going to go to this url so let me copy that let's take a look at that what do we have here so let's add it so you can see we do have our title it means that this web page is uh, currently showing uh, the next step is that I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add a form now uh, the way the Jinja handles form is not through a Jinja variable because by default forms in HTML they have a very cool functionality that whenever you provide a button or an input with a type of submit and when you click that without any other database connection or server connection the form is going to be submitted to a server the server that is linked to that html file so you do not need to provide any extra configuration or code for Jinja. that's a very cool uh, feature of html forms so i'm going to say form not from form i'm going to delete the action and I'm going to create a div. So I'm going to separate some HTML elements. Uh, the first one, I'm going to give it a class of uh, question. This is for styling purposes. And you're going to see that in later lectures. I'm going to give the question a label. And I'm going to say question. What is the label is going to say? The label is going to say question. And then we have an input. Now, what is the type of the input? We have talked about this, right? Because it is a question, it is a type of text. And I'm going to provide the input with a name as well, a name attribute, and I'm going to call it question. And I'm going to provide it as required. I'm, I, I'm not sure if we have talked about this attribute. This is the, uh, the kind of attribute, HTML attribute, that is that does not have any value. When it is required, it means that the user cannot fill out cannot submit an empty form that is bad data you need to restrict bad data being entered into your database for as much as you can so this required is a nice little attribute which is provided to us by html that basically belongs to this front end uh, form um, validation category so if the form input is empty it will never be submitted just because it says required and uh, let me just copy this part 
I'm going to come down here. I'm going to save that. So this is going to be answer. So let me grab uh, control D, just grab all the occurrences of it. And I'm going to set them to in SWER, except for this one, which I'm just going to uppercase. This is required as well. And outside of that diff, I'm going to create an input. Now here, the choice is yours. You can provide a, a button with a type of submit or an input with a type of submit. I'm going to go very generic input with a type of submit. And the value, which is going to be the text, is going to be create question. Save that. Let's run this. And there we go. So we got our question. These are the previous iterations that I've tried with it. And these are the answers. And when you click on it, it is going to save that data. So now if you click, you can see it says, please fill out this field. Where is this message coming from? This little tooltip, it is coming from here. Here, this required. So, so far, everything is working correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test this. So, I'm going to say do dogs walk. Very simple stuff. I'm going to say yes. So, when I say create question, there is something that is happening in here. You can see in the URL address of our web page, I cannot zoom in URL address, we have our question and answer in the form of keyword arguments as well as their value so we have the question this is the question and this is equal sign and then the value for that and then we have the answer and then we have the value for that now you might have like 100 questions like 1000 questions and answers now this is not ideal why because even though the form is being submitted but all the data is being shown here this is not good for two reasons one this is cluttering our url and two this is not a secure way of grabbing the user data right so what we are going to do in next is i'm going to i'm going to show you a way to handle this uh, next up i'm just going to show you within the form we have an attribute called method and i'm going to set it to post now this post method is the post http method which basically says we have talked about HTTP methods. The get, requ get method or get request for HTTP says, give me some data. The post method, and one more thing, these are the CRUD operations that we have talked in the uh, SQL Essentials course. These are those CRUD operations. Get is going to grab data, retrieve data. Post is going to create data. Update, of course, is going to update data. And delete is going to delete data. So this post is going to create new data. In this context, it is going to create new questions. So whenever I provide that there, let's save that, let's reload this. And I'm going to go to fall and I'm going to go to that URL. And I'm going to reload that. And I'm going to say, uh, do dogs walk? And I'm going to grab the answer, yes. And when I save it, when I say create question, it has been um, submitted to the database. But there is a problem here. There is a good thing and there is a bad thing. The good thing is that we no longer have that question answer data within the URL. What is the bad thing? It says method not allowed. Why? If you remember from our introductory lectures, I told you that the only method, methods that um, the view functions by default support are git header and options they're not method they're in extra information about methods so the only method that a view function by default accepts this view function that we just created right here is the get method you need to specifically tell it to accept the post method as well so what i'm going to do here is we are going to go to our view function which handles this add question html page or template jinja template then we are going to tell it to accept please accept the post request as well so as another argument i'm going to say methods i'm going to provide methods and within a list i'm going to say okay accept get which you do and i'm going to i'm going to set post as well now how can we test this so far we are not equipped to test this 
So I'm going to provide a, uh, some conditionals here as well. First off, I'm going to give you the theory, then I'm going to provide you with the code. So I'm going to test the post request by, uh, by using a conditional with a request object that um, I'm going to import right now. So I'm going to say request. Now, what is the request object going to do for us? So I'm just going to provide a comment here. So you know below this line, it is REST API and we do not want to work with it. So let me just copy that a couple of more times. There we go. So we are basically working right here. Now the request object is a global object defined by Flask. And even though it is global, Flask, Flask makes sure that inside a view function, it represents the current request from the browser that we are trying to process. The request object contains the request method, the URL that was requested by the browser, cookies, headers, also the data that the user filled, which, uh, which is the most important thing that we are interested in. Now, let's say after some time, another request comes in for another URL that is going to be handled by another view function. Then, there, then within that view function, within the other view function, the request object will refer to that new request. So in conclusion, the, re uh, the request object is bound to the scope of each view function that we have in our Flask application. So if you're trying to provide a GET request for this URL, that request object is going to be different than the request object that is used for this view function. So every request object is contained within the view function that it is referring to. So in this case, we are going to add an if statement and we are going to say if the post method is if the method is post, then we want to know that the, that we want to grab the user's data, the data that the user has entered and we are going to process it and uh, we are going to add it to our database. All right, so what I'm going to do in here is uh, I'm going to grab our rendered template. Now, uh, there's one more thing that I need to tell you as well, and that is I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that in like 15 seconds. So I'm not going to delete this. So I'm going to, in top, I'm going to say if request this is a request object. It has a method property on it. If the request method is double equal, keep that in mind, <clears throat> excuse me. If it is post, if it is post, then what do we want to do? I'm going to say, let me provide some space here. Now, it means that it is a post. It means that we have received some data. Now, we need to clean up that data because that data comes from an HTML form, right? And we need we want to insert it within our JSON database. So, we need to provide it with a with that JSON format. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what we are actually trying to do here is we want to grab the data from the form, convert it to JSON data, and then store it within our database, because otherwise it is not going to be stored. The database is not going to accept it. So I'm going to, I'm going to create a dictionary. I'm going to say question dict, and I'm going to grab a uh, dictionary, and I'm going to say, what do I want to create here? So we know that JSON uh, keys have quotes. JSON values also have quotes. So I'm going to say the, the, the first key is going to be question because we know what is the structure of our database. So I'm going to say question and then equal sign. Now, where is that actual data that we have received from the user? It is contained within this request object. That is what I told you before. This request object not only contains the method, the URL, but also the raw data that the user has entered. And how can we access it? So I'm just going to say form. This is how we can access it. And I'm just going to say question. This is going to be the form, the raw data that we receive from there. And I'm going to create another one as well. This time, this is going to be answer request.form. And I'm going to set it to answer. There we go. So this is going to extract the question and this is going to extract the answer. And that's why 
we have provided these input fields with the name answer and the name question because we are referencing them right here so so far we are good to go so the only thing now we have processed our data right we have cleaned up our data but what we have not done so far is actually save it to the database so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our um, uh, question dick and I'm going to append it to our database so I'm going to say so within here I'm okay not there I'm going to say db db dot append what do we want to append we want to append the question tick now we need to save these changes to the database as well right so we need to do that so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our databases and I'm going to create a save DB method so where is our model.py this is going to handle our database so within this model.py I'm going to come and come down here and I'm going to create another function I'm going to say save DB this is going to say let's open our database first questions dot JSON we are going to open it up uh, and we're just going to provide it with W which means this W flag says we are trying to write to our database as file and then I'm going to say return json.dump.dump so this is going to dump all the data within this JSON what is the database that we want to dump it into it is DB and what is the data that we want to dump we want to dump into our database status file Let's save that so in here in in this case what I'm going to do is uh, let's go to else statement so this return render template is going to be in the else statement and I'm going to tell you why the reason that it is in the return statement in the else statement is because when the when the method is post we want to do all this stuff and a lot more but when the method is not post then what is it it is get and this is what handles get requests for us so let's save the changes to our database I'm just gonna say uh, first we need to import that right so um, uh, this is our database we have imported this uh, DB and I'm gonna say uh, that was save DB right there we go so save DB I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say uh, save DB let's just call it and that is going to uh, do the rest of the trick for us now after the user has entered the data I want to make sure that the user has some sort of confirmation let's say I want to show the question that the user has entered after the user says create question I want to show the user the question that the user has created so let's redirect the user to that page so I'm going to say return now redirect is also another uh, function that we need to import in here from flask so I'm going to say redirect and um, we are going to say return redirect and within here what it is that we are trying to add now first you need to provide the URL for the view function that is going to handle this redirect this redirecting what is so whenever we want to hand we want to try to handle URLs for view functions we need to import our URL for as well which we have been uh, working with in our HTML file so I'm just going to import that as well I'm going to say URL for there we go let's provide a space and I'm going to say URL for uh, redirect redirect what is this error no value or location in function call okay I'm trying to add it don't worry so URL 4 let's just add that save it the error goes away there we go we are in the server the server is running so what is the um, view function that handles redirects basically we want to show the user that question and whenever the user enters a new question that question will be added to the end of the list so we need to show the user 
the page which is which handles the quiz itself. Uh, why did I name this quiz? Now that I'm thinking about it, oh, yeah, okay, th this is some. This is very silly. Uh, <laughs> the reason that this is named quiz, this you might have this question in your mind as well. We have talked about a lot. <laughs> you have talked about it a lot. The reason that it is quiz is because. Um, when I created this application in JavaScript, it was Animal Trivia Quiz application. That's why I called it Quiz. I'm just gonna keep it as Quiz. So uh, when I wanna show the user the last question, that last question is handled by this HTML page. And this HTML page is handled by this view function. So this view function which says questions view, this actually handles the view for our questions, right? It is going to view our questions. And whenever we, the user enters new questions, those new questions are no exception. They're gonna be handled by this view question no matter what. So I'm just gonna say questions, questions underscore view. And what is going to be their index? So I'm gonna say the index, uh, I you can't change this. You can say okay when the user enters a new question, I want to give it the index zero. So that new question is shown in uh, at the top. But what I'm trying to do here is I want the new question to be shown at the bottom. So I'm gonna grab the length of our database db and I'm gonna say minus one. So this minus one is going to give me the end, the final index, and that is going to be the index for our new question that the user has inserted. We're going to take a look at that in just a second. Don't worry about it. And I think we're done here, so I'm just going to reload this page. And now you can see, um, let's, let's go there. There we go. So our uh, do, uh, do dogs walk question has been added. I'm going to go ahead to our database. You can see the database has been changed. It is not reformatting it. So let's say control shift P format document configure uh, JSON language features for this one. There we go. So I'm going to delete this question. I'm going to reload. Um, oops. Okay. I'm going to delete that, reload the page. Hmm. So the question is not being deleted from there. Do we have any kind of errors in here? In, in, in here. So console, we do have all of our questions. Uh, post add new question, 302, status 200. Just refresh the page. Come on, buddy. So I'm going to stop the server, run it again. Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to say Python. Uh, let's go to this server. There we go. So it is deleted from there. Now I'm going to try to add uh, a new question in here. So uh, what I'm actually going to do is let's go to the URL. So what was the URL? It is add new question, which is going to handle adding new questions. So I'm going to add that. This is going to show us the form. I'm going to say do birds. I'm going to say do birds fly and I'm going to say yes let's create the question so whenever the question is created what actually happens is that we are redirected using this we are redirected to, to the questions view of uh, view function and that questions view function is going to uh, show us this template quiz.html template and that quiz.html template is going to show us that question that we have just added. So that is, you can think of it, that, uh, you can think of that as a sort of confirmation that our question has been in, uh, added. So if I create it, you can see that do birds fly and it says yes. So because this is the end of our database, that's why it says start over. So when you start over, you can basically go to the last question next question next question do birds fly yes and from here you can redirect you can go to the home page as well and you can see that here you can see that in here as well so if i just run it it says question do birds fly yes so we have been able to add questions to our database we we know how we can clean our database we can handle 
user input and how we can add that cleaned process data sort of uh, into our database. So with this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.